Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, video postmortem. Um, this is a game that I played last night at our uh, local club here. This was played at a uh, slow time control of game in two hours with the five second delay. Um, I was facing a, a tough opponent for me. It's, um, his rating is 1746 and my rating is 1894. Uh, so you'd think I would have the advantage, but I've played him three times before, and I've never beaten him. So it's interesting. Uh, afterwards, I went and looked up our history, and uh, in the previous games I always had played uh, d4, and he played a Slav defense. Uh, we got into a classical Slav in a couple of the games, and we got into the Moran variation in one of them. And uh, it seems like uh, what happens is I tend to over over push, over press, and get into trouble. So. Uh, We'll see what happens in this game. Uh, this game, I started out with e4. I didn't um, remember our history exactly. I just knew I had kind of a bad record against him. Um, and, but I alternate between e4 and d4. So he played c5, knight f3, knight c6. So we get a, a Sicilian. And uh, it's part of the reason why I chose to play e4, thinking, well, we might get a Sicilian. And uh, this is uh, I've been doing a series of videos on the opening basics and starting with the Sicilian. So this, I thought, would be a good example of uh, how to play a Sicilian in a slow time control. Um, and we go into the Sveshnikov variation. So I play d4, he takes, I take. And then um, the immediate e5 is a Kalashnikov, but knight f6, the more common Sveshnikov, attacking the pawn, forcing me to defend and blocking the c-pawn so I don't have the move c4 later. And now e5. So this, uh, this line has been played many times before. You can uh, look it up in opening basics if you want the, uh, the details of uh, these moves. But um, I play the bishop g5 line here. There are alternatives. He kicks. I go back here. <coughs> and then um, he plays b5, threatening the knight. And, uh, of course, this is the point of this uh, bishop g5 move, is I need to secure a square for uh, this knight because it's about to get uh, forked here. <laughs> so uh, by pinning uh, his knight on f6, I secure the uh, d5 square and can drop the knight there. And now he unpins, and I have to take action immediately. And uh, in this situation, um, this is uh, a good knight here. So typically, uh, you take and um, in order to maintain the knight here, and you don't mind giving up the bishop. But uh, black, black gets something out of this. Black gets the bishop pair, but he also has a backwards pawn. And so now I play the move c3. You have a choice here between c3 and c4, but I was uh, feeling like I wanted to play uh, more solid in this game. C, c4 opens things up immediately, but I thought, well, c3, you know, if my opponent later gets pressure on the c-file, it might be useful to have that pawn defended by the pawn on b2. Now, the other point of c3 is that... Uh, provides a square for this knight to get back into the game. He'll come back along, along one of these routes, typically, and reinforce the d5 point. So at this point, uh, that's about all of the theory that I know. My opponent played bishop g5, and um, I, I wasn't even sure that was a good move. But it turns out that is a, a standard move in this position, one of the two choices. Let's see, the other, the other move here is, um, if we back up, the other move here is just to castle and allow me to take the knight, the bishop if I want. Uh, I'm probably not going to take this bishop. Notice that this bishop is, is the bad bishop and it's hemmed in by this pawn structure. But anyway, yeah, the game went in a different direction. He played bishop g5 immediately, so I don't have the opportunity to take it. And I played bishop e2. I guess um, knight c2 is the most common move here. I mean, the knight's going to go there eventually anyway. I thought I would prepare castling. So not the most common move, but not a mistake. And then knight c2. Um, so, yeah, ever since bishop g5, I've just been making up these moves on my own. I'm out of my knowledge of the opening books. I'm trying to uh, <clears throat> think of a plan here. And um, the idea I had was, uh, well, I noticed this bishop over here is, um, might have trouble getting into the game because it's hemmed in by these pawns. So my idea was I'll let this bishop live, but I'll keep it on this diagonal. I'll just try and make sure that there's no targets on this diagonal for the bishop to hit. I'll sort of keep that an empty, an empty uh, diagonal for the bishop so it can uh, go back and forth but not do anything. So I'm basically I'm trying to make this an irrelevant piece. And then um, 
try and attack on the queen side and take advantage of his advanced pawns over here and maybe create some weaknesses. So that's the general strategy that I came up with at this point. My opponent played e6. And of course, I don't want to um, have to take back with a pawn here and uh, give him cover for his uh, d pawn. The other, the other feature of this position is the backwards d pawn, and I want to keep that backwards and weak, and part of that is keeping an open file here um, so that it can be easily attacked from the front. But as it stands now, if he takes the knight, I'll be able to take back with the queen, so I don't have to um, do anything immediately. Um, if I do um, do something to support the knight, I would probably play knight to b4, uh, because I don't want to play uh, knight to e3 at this point and give his bishop a target. What I was saying about uh, keeping this bishop uh, irrelevant. But since I don't immediately have to support the knight, I thought I would just castle here. And my opponent plays knight to e7, challenging the knight. And now I need to do something, because he's threatening to take and uh, force me to take back with the pawn. And uh, I could play knight b4 here, defending it. So knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes as possible. But I thought that was kind of a, a dry-looking position with not a lot of activity. And um, it seems to give uh, black a tempo compared to the move I chose to play. I chose to play knight takes because this forces him to take back. And now I get a move here. And uh, with this move, I can go into my plan of uh, attacking on the queen side. So this is a point to uh, take stock. Um, I, I played this... Uh, intentionally to get to this position and it turns out this is not maybe the best plan <laughs> so if we back up what do i have in this position besides taking on a4 the chess engine is saying oh i should trade off his good bishop play bishop to g4 here that's that's probably a good idea or activate my queen queen to d3 these are ideas that it has but i think it, it prefers uh, prefers this bishop g4 move trying to uh trying to trade off the light squared bishop i think um if I had to do it over again, that's the move I would play. So, But it's not obvious to me at this point what's wrong with the move a4. It takes a couple of, uh, a couple of moves before it becomes clear. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and put the moves on the board. He took the pawn. I took back with the rook. And he played the move a5. And this is a pretty good move um, because, like I said, I didn't want the knight to go to this square um, where it would be hacked off by the bishop. Um, so I was planning to use a square b4, but now when he played a5, uh, he's taken away that square from me. Now, it's not like um, it's not like this is a horrible position for me. Um, it's uh, The engine rates it as, oh, about even. Uh, maybe slightly better for black. It's, it's varying. Uh, but I have to play the right move here, and it's uh, tricky to play the move. Um, the right move here is knight to a3, and that's... Uh, <laughs> that's a move I'm really reluctant to play because uh, this this knight, I mean this rook, looks like it would be totally stranded after knight a3. Um, another possibility is bishop to c4. That's another way of trading off this bishop and going back to that plan. Um, so I'm doing okay at this point, I guess, but uh, I play another move, which uh, what I was still trying to do is trying to get in this knight b4 idea, and I play the move. Um, Rook to a3 first. What I wanted to play, let me explain why rook to a3. What I wanted to play was I wanted to play queen to a1 so that I would have this pin on the pawn and the knight could go to b4 anyway and then get to this uh, excellent square on um, on d5. So um, that's my plan. I think that's what's wrong is I'm is, um, taking too many pieces away from the center where the action is and trying to get something going on the queen side. So it's a bit tricky to do that correctly. And um, the problem with queen a1, there's an immediate tactical problem, which is bishop to uh, b3. It's bishop is really excellently posted here to take advantage of my peculiar pieces. So that is a fork that would win material. So I noticed that and I said, well, I'll drop the bishop, the rook. I'll drop the rook back to a3 and cover that square. So now he can't place his bishop there, and I'm still planning to play queen to a1 and go after that, um, go after the pawn and also allow knight to b4. So my opponent here could have played um, differently. 
Yeah, so this is exactly the point. So rook a3 was a mistake. And uh, there's actually a tactic in this position. So um, you know, I've given you what I've been thinking about, and uh, but there's uh, just a tactic here for black. So why don't you uh, <clears throat> take a second, pause the video if you need to, and see if you can spot the tactic. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. It's a really simple one. He could play <laughs> queen b7. Cancel that. He could play queen b7. New variation. Why is this a tactic? I have loose pawns. This uh, pawn is loose and this pawn is loose. <laughs> and I can't defend both of them. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've been uh, having all of these interesting uh, thoughts about uh, attacking on the queen side and uh, controlling the center and different things like that. Exchanging light squared bishops, all these uh, strategic concerns. But I've just left a couple of loose pawns. And uh, he can take advantage of it with a very simple uh, move. So this is an example of why I'm not uh, not any higher rated than I am. And uh, fortunately for me, uh, it's probably how I lost uh, my previous games to this opponent, is um, I would, I would uh, make some oversight while thinking about other things. And, uh, and he would spot them and take advantage of them. Um, so what have I done wrong? Well, so for one thing, the, the whole strategy of going after the queen side might be a little bit uh, dubious um, since uh, it's, it has some tactical flaws with it and also because I'm neglecting the center. Um, but the, the main point, I guess, is that uh, on every move, you should really stop to check for tactics. And uh, it's just hard for me to do for some reason. I get uh, involved in the game. I get to thinking about all the things that are going on. And I don't just stop to do a simple scan for tactics. And this applies for to both sides, right? As white, I should scan for tactics before playing a move for like rook a3. I should notice that I have these loose pawns and, uh, and be prepared to, to deal with a move like uh, queen to b7. Um, and also for my opponent, after I played a move like rook a3, in fact, after every move, he should stop and say, okay, what are the weaknesses in my opponent's, what, what are his loose pieces, are there any tactics here I can take advantage of? And he might have spotted that. Certainly a, a stronger player would have pounced on that uh, instantly. So um, another point, I guess, uh, you know, it's hard every move to... Uh, stop and say, you know, here's, here's, here's the stage where I check for tactics. Somehow I have trouble doing that. But maybe just a simple, um, make a mental note of all your loose pieces. When you look at this position, uh, you should have in your head already, okay, I've got these uh, loose pawns here, and just have that uh, in mind to think about each move. Okay, just some ideas for you how to, how to improve your play. Some, I didn't spot this, my opponent didn't spot this, and he played King h8. I think he's uh, preparing the move uh, f5 here, trying to uh, counteract, counterattack in the center, which is a logical response when I attack on the queen side. So I played queen a1 now, and uh, I'm okay here. Um, black is actually still better. So this whole plan of going over the queen side is not, uh, maybe not so great. He can still play queen b7 and try and hit back in the center, but instead he decided to play rook f to b8 as a way of uh, holding on to things. And now I can play my intended move, knight b4. So this is, this is what I planned all along. He can't take it with the rook, I take with a pawn. He, can't, he takes with a pawn, I, I grab his rook. So, um, and now I have uh, the position I wanted to achieve. So after these two moves, after his, uh, he missed the opportunity to play queen b7, I guess on two occasions, basically. Um, then uh, the position is equalized and there's no longer any advantage to black. And uh, the game continues from here. So it's uh, abandoning the uh, center play is not necessarily a bad idea, but it has to be done, <laughs> has to be done in a correct fashion, I guess. Um, so anyway, he brings his queen over here to b7 to um, defend his rook. And so now um, the knight is really uh, being threatened with an attack. But uh, I can also just grab this pawn, and I do. And now he can grab this pawn. And uh, I miscalculated this. I was thinking, well, if he takes the pawn, I have the skewer. I thought I was protecting it uh, with my bishop indirectly by threatening the skewer. But um, he just has to trade rooks first. And then he takes the pawn. So uh, about an even game. Um, I've, I've managed to activate some of my pieces. Um, my, my bishop is loose, and I have to uh, do something about it. But this is a, a good post for the bishop. And uh, 
his queen is starting to run a little low, low on squares. Notice I'm controlling all of these squares and um, along this diagonal and along this diagonal as well, as well. He could drop back over here or he could move to uh, some of these squares on the fourth rank. He chose to go to c4. It's uh, actually not a bad choice. Top, top choice of the chess engine. So that's a reasonable way to try and keep play. Now this is a very interesting position if you look at it. there's um, I've got these two pawns and he's got these two pawns. And um, if uh, we were to trade off all the pieces, I, this is probably a winning endgame because I have this outside uh, past pawn, whereas I can block his pawns in the center. Uh, so uh, so one strategy at this point could be just to, to trade everything off. So I, I'm not averse to trades. Um, I am a little bit worried though. Um, this backwards pawn is still somewhat weak and um, he has the idea maybe of just moving his queen to uh, queen to b3 and uh, forcing me into a defensive posture trying to defend this pawn. So um, with this in mind I played the move queen to um, a4 here just covering that square. If the queen goes there I'm going to trade it and the bishop here is not a threat of any kind. Um, Notice also through all of this, I've been successful in, in deactivating his bishop. His bishop is still not hitting any targets. But I do have to uh, control this square because if his bishop ever gets in here, it could start chewing up these pawns. So I need to uh, either trade off that bishop at some point or keep, keep my rook to keep the uh, bishop out of these key squares. And now um, he could push on immediately with um, d5 or e4. He chose to play e4. So that's a good move. Let me back up. I should probably play something different here. Yeah, the engine is suggesting bishop to d5, forcing some trades. Yeah, that's probably a better way to play. Because uh, he gets, uh, with this move, once again, black is starting to push me around a little bit. Bishop has to go back here. And, well, at least I'm controlling this b3 square, so the queen's not getting in there. He plays g6. He was starting to get nervous about the back rank. All this time... There's been various threats. If the rook ever uh, lifts up, I might be able to checkmate him on the back rank. So not a bad idea. But um, right here, yeah, no, this still keeps the advantage to black. I was going to say, he, had, he had, may have had a better move, but not, not much better. Um, so I play the move queen c2. I need to regroup. You know, my knight was pinned there. I got to want to get my queen behind these pawns, push these pawns forward, and maybe also stop these guys from proceeding. He pushes on with d5. And now I can kick his queen. So once again, I am taking advantage of the fact that his queen doesn't have a lot of squares. Um, it can't really come along this diagonal. Like that's covered. It can't go on this diagonal. It can't go right or left. It can only go back. And actually, if you look at all the squares it can go to, if it goes to the dark squares, um, I have a fork with the knight forking the queen and the rook. So those are no good. And if it goes to this square, I'm attacking it already. So really, the only move for the queen is to drop all the way back. And I had seen this far ahead, and I was thinking um, it might be good that I can get some activity with the queen. But right now, there's a tactic threatened that at least I noticed. He's threatening to uh, take my knight, and uh, my queen is unprotected here. So I drop my queen back, and uh, now I thought uh, I'm doing good here. I've got threats of uh, taking this pawn. I've also got the threat of just coming here with the queen... <clears throat> coming with the queen to this square and uh, delivering a check here. And uh, that queen would have a pretty dominant position here, and this, this bishop would continue to be irrelevant to the game. So he thought he made what I thought was a good move, which was uh, bishop to f6. Uh, but the engine points out there's actually a better move here, and the way for black to keep an advantage in this position is to play king g7. Very uh, clever move, I think, sort of inviting me to check. But uh, if I uh, check here, he can attack the queen with the bishop to f6 anyway, because the king is there to support the bishop. Um, so, uh, and uh, I'm not sure if I could grab the pawn in this case. Let's see, if I try that, knight takes d5. Well, I'm, I also have to worry about him taking this pawn, so I'm, I'm not, uh, I wouldn't be gaining a pawn. So anyway, he played the move instead. He played bishop f6 directly. And now I can take the pawn, or so I think. I think I can take the pawn. So here's um, another point for you to uh, maybe uh, exercise your calculation skills. So as I pointed out, um, 
this this rook is on the the B file. I'm going to point out uh, all the factors here and then uh, give you a second to calculate and pause the video. So let me let me talk about it first. Um, so if I take and he takes back, and uh, my queen takes and he grabs the pawn, that's the main line I was considering. And uh, you have to look at that position, try and visualize it, and see all the things that are going on there, and uh, and decide if you think it's safe for uh, white to take that pawn. Okay, yeah, I'm going to pause, give you a chance to uh, pause the video right now. Okay, I'm going to uh, start talking about the uh, answer here. I decided it was safe to take, and uh, I took it. And uh, he did not take back, but if he had taken back, then I would have taken, and then he could have grabbed the, the, the pawn. And also, when he grabs this pawn, he's attacking my bishop. So that's what you need to notice. You need to notice a loose bishop here. Uh, but also, there's a reply that white has. White can take this pawn and attack this bishop, which is also loose. So those, that's how far ahead I was able to uh, calculate and decide it was okay. And I stay a pawn up in this line. Um, if he grabs a pawn... Actually, I don't stay a pawn up in this line, do I? It's here. All I get in this line is uh, is I get to have uh, a weak pawn here to attack. I can play bishop to g4 to attack his queen and go after the weak pawn. So, uh, yeah. So, actually, the, I, I calculated to this point and didn't notice that he could just grab this pawn and defend his bishop. He could also go this way. Does this work? No, he can't go that way. I'm sorry. He can't. There's a mate. <laughs> yeah, he can't leave the back rank because of the mate, but he can take with the bishop. So I, I calculated this far, but I actually didn't calculate to the end and notice that bishop takes c3. Uh, but it still turned out to be safe. Um, anyway, my opponent, after I took the pawn, he decided not to take the knight, but to relocate his bishop. And... Uh, so it looks on the surface like I've won a pawn, but the chess engine evaluation is still uh, completely even. So black probably has good compensation here in the form of the bishop pair. Um, but let's see how the rest of the game goes. I played uh, knight back to b4, just uh, blocking the rook and holding onto these pawns. These pawns, I'm planning to use them to win in the end game. He goes uh, rook to b6. Uh, he wants to come over here and attack my queen. So I, I bring my queen up to d2 so I can go to this e3 square when he attacks it. He does. And um, I'm also putting pressure on his e-pawn. So he chose to defend it with the move f5. And somehow, I guess, uh, the position has gone from uh, even to being favorable for white. So if we back up a little bit, let's see where where the mistake was. Maybe this... Starting with this move, rook to b6. Um, the engine is recommending queen c7 or king to g8. Or f5 immediately. It's interesting. Yeah, it's hard for me to say what, what, uh, what black's plan is at this point. Um, I mean, this seemed like a reasonable plan to me, but uh, somehow it didn't quite work out. I guess because it allowed me to activate my queen. Okay, so we went this far, and he defended the pawn. And uh, at this point, I have some slight edge. I decide um, to trade off. Uh, he defended, and so I took. But as I was saying before, you know, in, in an end game with these uh, past pawns, I, I certainly have a big advantage. So that's that's what I'm going for. Um, after the exchange, I decide to play g3 because I want to be able to move my pieces around without getting. Uh, made it on the back rank, so I needed to create some lift. And secondly, um, when his queen went to the um, d6 square, he was also threatening to place his bishop here and maybe force my queen to a less comfortable square. So right here, uh, he makes a mistake. He should probably play something like, uh, what's the engine saying? Bishop to g8, retreating the bishop. King to g7, improving the king position. Bishop to f7. Bishop to b3. Uh, okay, 
So not a whole lot of uh, plans there, but just uh, moving moving his pieces around and asking me how I'm going to break through, basically, is, is what all black can do. Just kind of a quiet waiting strategy is uh, what's called for in this position. Uh, he tried to play actively with f4. He said he was sort of hoping I would just uh, take on impulse, but um, you know, you don't want to do anything in a knee-jerk reaction. He left his um, e4 pawn undefended, and I took that. And now, after this exchange... I take back with the pawn, and I'm keeping control of this square so his bishop is not coming over here to cause trouble. And uh, at this point, uh, notice that uh, I have a light squared bishop, and all my pawns are on dark squares. So this is the ideal configuration. These dark squared pawns are uh, mean that this bishop has free movement. It's not blocked by his own pawns. And also, they uh, against uh, the bishop pair, they hamper the movement of this bishop. Notice that... Uh, the bishop can't go to any of these squares. It's really uh, limited to retreats um, because uh, with the, with my pawns, I'm, I'm using them to restrict the motions, the mobility of this bishop. Okay, um, in this position, it's black's turn. Yeah, I just took back. He played bishop to f5, hitting my queen now. And I went here, queen to d5. Again, trading queens, I think, is uh, good for me. Um, he tried, in this position, queen to f6. And um, I played the move knight to c6. So I had a couple of choices here. I could have played bishop to c5 right away, which threatens checkmate. Um, but he can defend that. And um, so I thought, well, maybe if I play the knight move first, he'll put his pieces in an awkward spot, and then this... Uh, move bishop to c5 will come with more force. Uh, bishop c4, rather. He placed his bishop here to c7. And um, right here, because he's retreated this bishop, I could play queen d4. Um, but I, I put in this move bishop c4 because that's what I'd been thinking about. Uh, he moved his king to g7 to avoid getting mated. Now, of course, I can deliver this check, um, but it doesn't do anything. His king can escape here. So what I played in this position is queen to d4. Pinning his queen and, and forcing an exchange. There's going to be an exchange of queens one way or another. And uh, if he takes my queen, I can take back with the knight so I don't have to mess up my pawn. So I'll have two pawns that are uh, past pawns and uh, they're connected. So it's an easy endgame win. And my opponent uh, resigned at this point and that's how the game ended. So anyway, I finally managed a win against this uh, tough opponent, although not without some wrinkles. So I thought, uh, well, it's interesting, an interesting lesson in staying alert and also an interesting example in uh, strategies to use against the uh, Sveshnikov. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.